Hi, um, thanks to Ryan at the EV blog site. I um, had a little bit of an accident with the bond wires uh, playing with his um, Seek Thermal Cam. We've now got a, um, a unit that we can uh, do more of an extreme teardown of. Um, what we'll probably try and do is get the chip off. It looks like it's glued down, so I think maybe a heat to soften that glue and get that chip off. Um, X ray it and maybe also sand it, yeah, just grind it down to, the, to expose the dye. Um, maybe take all the chips off and perhaps x-ray and or sand down the PCB layers to get a PCB image. Because in theory you should be able to download your own firmware into this to um, do other things with it, so uh, it might be useful to someone. I'm going to heat this board up with some hot hot air. Hopefully it will soften this so uh, glue. Well, unfortunately we've managed to crack the back a little, just a little corner off of it, but uh, most of it's in one piece, just hanging on by the uh, bond wires. Right, so nothing obvious on the uh, x-ray, so I think what I'm going to do is just try and grind this top window down just on this um, carbide paper, so hopefully we should expose the cavity and actually be able to see the dye inside. This might take a while. Right, so we've just managed to break through, just carefully take the rest, take out the rest of that lid and uh, take a look at the dye. Right, it turns out the, uh, the working distance on my microscope is so small that I've actually had to machine off all of that spacer to um, actually get it close enough to get a good image of the main um, sensor array. But a side benefit of that is we've now actually exposed the, um, the, the hole of the bottom die. On the left hand side there's what's presumably some of the processing um, circuitry, so hopefully we can actually get a closer look at that now on the uh, microscope. I've just glued this down to a bit of PCB just to hold it in place, otherwise it would just disappear and get lost forever. Uh, after I did the microscope images of the Sentry in the Flurry 4, a few people asked me about the microscope I was using. Um, this is it, it's not particularly expensive, it's from a um, German company called Optech. Um, picked on eBay, I can't remember how much it was, it was I think two or three hundred quid, not stupidly expensive. Um, this is a little bit unusual though because the, it's upward facing, but the, uh, the critical thing for this sort of thing is that the actual light comes through the lens, so there's a, there's a basically uh, a light source here and a beam splitter so it actually shines the light up the lens so it's used for looking at surface detail rather than sort of more conventional microscopes that are looking through sort of for looking through translucent objects um, I think this is technically called a met metallurgical microscope because it's a look designed for looking at surface detail um, it's actually got a, a top um, port for connecting cameras to but I found this doesn't actually work all that well there's actually you have to flip, flip the mirror out to um, get the light path through that but the the mounting sort of didn't doesn't seem to be that good for the uh, I got this Canon EOS microscope mount but it comes with a sort of sleeve but I couldn't yeah there's no, nothing to really hold this you know you can clamp it down but it doesn't really hold itself straight and I found this top mount doesn't really work that well um, but the if you take one of the eyepieces off this 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 is a sort of a moderately snug fit in here, and that that works reasonably well. But it's still there's a bit of wiggle, so you t I tend to have to hold it steady on a tripod because the obviously as that wiggles, the the focus plane isn't quite um, straight, so you have to get the right position to get it, fo you know, reasonably focused over a reasonable part of the image. So it, it, it's not ideal, but it does sort of work reasonably well. Um, the biggest problem I've had is that the the, um, the really sort of the high magnification above about times 50, the, you know, the, the thing has to be virtually touching the um, sample, so it's very difficult to get, get in focus. I did all these shots on a times 40 because I couldn't really get any decent contrast on the um, using the times 100 objective, and it's got a, a, a stage so you can sort of, you've got X Y adjustments so you can sort of pan across the um the subject which is obviously very handy for, for very small stuff so the focus is very very touchy so whenever i pan i need to refocus it a little bit um one problem was i forgot that these things are sort of basically like mems devices so when i was cleaning all the grot from sanding off the um 
the spacer I use compressed air to clean it and it's actually blown away quite a lot of the pixels unfortunately um, but you can just about see sort of the remains the, the sort of those black areas those are the actual pixels and they're actually sitting on some very thin supports which see if I can actually find some There's some just the remnants of some there you go you can just about see these little springy supports so basically those are providing thermal isolation between each pixel so it's, it's a bit hard to sort of figure out exactly what the 3D structure is but it looks like we've got these sort of springy supports and then the actual pixels sort of sit on top of those as sort of separate discrete pieces of um, presumably vanadium oxide or something uh, similar which is uh, just to provide that sort of um, <coughs> change in resistance with temperature and you saw obviously that most of the pixel is black which you'd expect to get um, plenty of absorption of the heat because these are basically a big array of um, thermistors so one interesting thing though if, if we look at the uh, if you get to the edge this is clearly the um, the main array but if we go to the edge so that's the corner of the main sensing array but there's actually another array here which is presumably for reference and calibration but what's surprising is just the sheer number of pixels in this extra little bit at the side there's a huge number of pixels here and I'll just take a quick overview at a much lower magnification again we can see sort of the overall dye area here with this uh, extra bit of the side and this is the uh, bond out area at the edge so there's quite a lot of this uh, spacer that's got to uh, go on still over it and some bits where the silicon got uh, damaged you can see most of the dye area is the uh, sensor so this is actually the whole area and in fact the spacer section only has a cavity around the main array this area over the um, on the edge this calibration or whatever it is this is actually underneath the wall of the spacer so these are definitely not you know, not being illuminated by the infrared so these are going to be sort of references um, it's like just a bit interesting as to why there's so many presumably sort of the, the, the spend, there's enough in the, there's quite a lot in the vertical to deal with sort of vertical gradients over the chip but there's about I think it's 22 across I don't really understand why they need so many but um, it's quite interesting nonetheless so we can see some of the detail around the outside but so we've still got this spacer this is the edge of the spacer that I sanded down um, I haven't seen any sort of manufacturers names or anything once I've got some pictures of the main array I'll see if I can crack off that spacer completely to see what's under the die and the edges um, there's no obvious sort of features obviously this will be like switching and there'll be an A to Z converter in there somewhere but you can see there's just some fairly uh, just a basically a bunch of tracking there's no obvious sort of really interesting features in there right unfortunately I can't actually get any more detail off this die um, because the working distance on this microscope at the high magnification is so so short I actually had to grind away all of that spacer bar just to get the lens close enough to the die and in the process it's pretty much taken off all the um, it's gone through sort of down to the main die at the bottom so um, if there is any text or anything on there it's uh, it's long gone now obviously this lens being glued into this cavity you can't really see what shape it is so um, let's uh, take it out and have a look So that's the actual lens uh, that we managed to uh, cut a hole through a little bit. Um, note the uh, one thing with all infrared lenses, they need a coating to um, avoid a lot of losses from reflection. So you see it's got this gold sort of finish on that side, but the um, non-exist side, it's actually, you can actually see the sort of silvery colour 
Um, I think this is chalcogenide glass as opposed to germanium in this thing. Um, one advantage of that is it's going to be moulded, uh, which is a much cheaper manufacturing process than the, than the um, germanium, which I believe requires sort of fairly expensive machining. So that's one sort of major contributor to the uh, re reducing cost in thermal image images. Is this um, new lens material is also used on the uh, Fleur Evo as well. Right, let's strip the bits off this PCB and then we'll have a go at uh, tracing out the actual PCB layout. Right, so all the bits off, I'll just clean it up with some uh, braid to uh, flatten it off. This is true. In terms of things to go and see this weekend, Chris of St. Albans says, I can't believe you haven't mentioned Brian Jackson. He of Gil Scott Hair on the phone. He's playing in Peckham tomorrow night. Well, I knew that because my son's going. Um, Brian Jackson is doing a sort of tribute to Gil Scott Heron. Brian Jackson and Gil Scott Heron were a partnership for many years in terms of songwriting and, and performing. And he's doing an evening of Gil Scott Heron music tomorrow down in Peckham. And, and Alfie will be there. I know that. So there we are. Coming up next. I might get some little in. I've just seen Gennaro outside and he's got food. Come on, so like it. So we've got a nice sort of flattened PCB, um, obviously there's a black resist so it's hard to see the track. Um, I'll just give this a quick x-ray, um, you, know, you can see some of the inner detail but it isn't actually all that helpful because you can't really tell which track's from which layer, you can pretty much figure out that it's four layers and you can see some of the ground plane breaks and a few odd tracks here and there but it would be very difficult to completely reverse engineer purely from this image because you, know, you don't really have any layer information, like, it wouldn't be impossible but um, uh, there's yeah, it wouldn't be totally impossible, I think it would be quite a lot of effort to do. Next I'm going to try uh, sanding off the resist to get down to the uh, first track layer. Right, so we've got the uh, outer layers nicely exposed, so I'll take uh, get photos of those. Right. In order to get the inner layers I found that using a sort of fairly soft um, grindy thing on the Dremel seems to be quite effective. So I'll use a rougher stone just to get the copper off and then uh, use the softer one once you get closer to the uh, power planes. So if you want to take off the board and not the uh, copper. a little bit too far in a couple of places but uh, this is a ground plane it shouldn't be too big a deal. I 
Right, so I actually found that using a scanner gave the, about the best uh, results. One of the issues was the sort of the texture on the surface from the sanding made it quite difficult to light a photo using a macro lens on a normal camera, but the scanner made a fairly reasonable job of it. This is at 1200 dpi. Um, which is enough resolution to get enough detail. Um, now I haven't bothered sort of trying to do a proper layer stack up drying on this because I'm not particularly interested in sort of fully tracing this out. Um, somebody on the thread of the EV blog, blog forum has actually done it so if you want to go over there if you want to take a look at the um, the images there. Um, so yeah, the performance of the Seek thing is sufficiently disappointing that I don't think I've, I'm particularly interested in doing any more work with it from the point of view of you know, driving it with something other than a phone, so um, I'll leave that to somebody else to have a play with, I'm afraid. And uh, while I've got the X-ray machine going, this is an X-ray of the ARM chip with its BGA package. Um, you can see that yeah, the, the bottom is basically a PCB. You can see the die in the middle with the bond wires sort of bonding out to the pads just outside the outline of the die and then just tracks on the PCB and through holes or through vias um, routing those to the positions of the balls. You can also see these pads going off to the side. Um, there could be two reasons for that. One one is for test points but the other may be for gold plating. Um, for a, sort of a thick gold plating it's generally an ele electroplating process so you need to be able to electrically connect all the pads together. So it could be that those pads off the side just go to a, like a ring to connect them all together as part of the uh, gold plating process.